Okay, Dustin. Hello. What's up, man? Welcome back to the show, everybody. I thought you were welcoming me. No, well, uh, you welcome, but you're here. Oh, right. I thought you were like ready for that. Oh, sorry. My bad. It's all well, right. Welcome, welcome, I'll welcome myself. Oh. Welcome me. Yeah. Make yourself at home. <laughs> Thanks me. I'll take my shoes off, prop my feet up. <laughs> um. Well, anyway, uh, we're here uh, this week. It is now very late August, in fact. Um, sure when I'm putting this out, but hey, um, if you're listening to this episode, the blitz will end soon. So yeah. if you're getting fatigue, if you're getting Hooper cast fatigue, uh, you're the only one. It's gonna <laughs> it's gonna end um, uh, in September. So uh, don't worry. Um, we have less to talk about. I mean, to be to be clear, the show's not going to end. No, 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 no. <laughs> the uh, just the the just onslaught. the blitzen, just the blitzen. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, today I've got a couple of shows to talk about, so um, I want to get started uh, here with Jack Ryan. Okay. Two days ago, a strike team assassinated President Udo, and yet you cannot prove that we weren't involved. Doesn't that concern you? No, sir. It terrifies me. You need to manage this, Jack. Yes, sir. What are you going to tell him? This corruption goes way higher than the CIA. Hey, buddy. Say welcome. I figured we could use the help. Wish me luck. Good luck. It's in my veins, I feel it. Give me everything you can from Domingo Chavez. Pressure is pumping, it's coming, it's pumping. On paper, you might be the deadliest operator the CIA's ever employed. I need to find out who's behind all this. And to be honest with you, you're all I've got. See this? Now I'm blushing. So what are we getting at? Convergence. The fusing of a drug cartel with a terrorist organization. They can move anything. Humans, weapons, suicide bombers. Unlimited resources paired with undying hatred. Not on my watch. The world is a game board of changing hands. Nothing but vipers beyond these walls. You do not know who these people are. I'm sure, I'll meet them soon enough. Jack is out there risking his life. I always wanted to be a federale. So the CIA was second, fourth. Jack, what the hell are you? you? Sure you wanna know? What'd he say? He hung up on me. Typical. So uh Jack Ryan is that uh, that show starring John Krasinski um mm-hmm. on Amazon Prime or Prime Video. I never know what to call it. I'm just gonna call it Amazon Prime. All right, so this is a TV show that is it's concluded. Uh the most recent mm-hmm. season just uh, had dropped like a month or two ago. Uh, so you can watch the show in its entirety on Amazon prime right now. Um, this is based on the Tom Clancy character, the same character that you've seen portrayed by like Harrison Ford and Ben Affleck and Alec Baldwin. Like this is Jack Ryan, the, the CIA, Don't Chris Pine, Chris Pine. Sure. <laughs> you forgot him, um, didn't you? Uh, I just sort of discounted him. You I omitted say. him. Yeah. I just, <laughs> H. Um, but uh, yeah, so he's an analyst for the CIA. If you don't know anything about Jack Ryan and um, he's an analyst who can, who sort of gets continuously pulled into the fray away from his, his, his desk, his desk job at the CIA. And, um, you know, depending on which novels you've read or which movies you've watched or this show, uh, kind of climbs the ladder of the intelligence community because um, he's brilliant and he can do bigger things than what he's doing when we meet him. So um, you've got in this show, John Krasinski playing Dr. Jack Ryan, and they very much sort of lean into the Marine, U.S. Marine officer backstory of this character. Um, I think I think Jack Ryan's a Marine yeah, he's a former Marine. Okay. So that's part of it. So, um, in the books and stuff. So, um, yeah, so Jack Ryan, I think this show, I think the scale of this show is impressive. Um, 
got a lot of locations, go to a lot of foreign countries, many, many, many characters that speak multiple foreign languages, which I've always said really makes dialogue sing because it's just, oh, if it, half the show is going to be like in Arabic, you're like, oh, it's so nice to hear or or mm. Russian or whatever. It's just like, it's it's just a nice change of pace from boring ass old English, yeah. especially when you're going to exposit like secret agent shit. Sure. It's just a lot cooler just to hear someone say it in a different language than it is to hear like, my God, they cut the hard line, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> all we've right. We've got company. Yeah, we've got company. <laughs> It ain't over till it's over. <laughs> anyway, um, I really enjoy the score too. I don't usually notice that in shows, but this score I did notice. Mm. Um, this show does what really great shows these days do, uh, which is they present familiar tropes or familiar characters or like a familiar plot line. And they prepare you to walk through them as if you're familiar with them, but then it'll either go the other way or it'll have the characters figure it out right away so we can move on to more exciting parts of the story that only happen in narratives once characters know as much or more than the audience. Um, that's one of the things I liked a lot about justified was there was no wasted time on us waiting for the care for Raylan to catch up to what we know. He just, you know, he either like, boop. Oh, yep, I was here. Yeah. Yeah. I knew you were coming cause I'm smart or I anticipated your actions correctly People might see that as a little bit of like plot armor. I don't. I like it when my protagonist uh, or my group of my ensemble of protagonists knows what I know uh, or at least figures out what I know pretty quickly. So I'm not just sitting here bored as shit waiting for them to figure it out because that's not Mm -hmm. that's that's padding. That's not drama. Yep. Um, So, you know, we've got like a formidable physical opponent for Jack, you know, like, oh, we've got this guy and he's he's in with the Russian police and he's clearly going to be like this, you know, this guy who's as big as John Krasinski. So they're probably going to fight. Oh, you know, boom, he gets killed by a mole, you know, like a shot on a train or something before he even has a chance to really fight Jack. Oh, okay, so we're going to skip the part where Jack probably fist fights him to the death and. Um, yeah. sp- sparing us that lack of tension that normally comes with those scenes. Cause we know he's not going to kill Jack. So we're right. just watching a fight for no reason. Um, not to mention that it's not entirely plausible that Jack Ryan would win most fights with like a big baddie from another country. He's an analyst. He might be a, right. a soldier, but for God's sake, he's not John wick, you know? Yep. Um, I, I will say with the show, I do get very lost in the plot. Um, some of the characters, the relationships, I forget, like, is that guy know that other guy or is he pretending to know him or is he double crossing him? So like, I'm a, there's a lot of times where I'm like, I'm not quite sure what's happening, but I'm sure it'll wrap up and I won't have to think too much about it. And I think that's sort of a mark of either me being a little bored or the show being a little lazy about its setup. Mm. Um, or, um, the show just being really comp and or the show being really confident in its um, resolution to where it's like, I don't know. I mean, I always feel like the best written things, it's super clear what everyone's doing um, yeah. or it's interesting if you're not supposed to know yet. So it's sort of a criticism, but not really. It sort of depends. It, it, to me, it's a balance. Like if you're going to be, if you do what this show did, which is like, yeah, maybe I'm a little confused about what's going on, but once you make sure we're on the same page by the end of this season. Then I'm like, Oh, okay, cool. Like that's, yep. that's fine. I sort of for, forgive yep. that stuff. So, um, so I trust the show to be conventional enough to resolve itself in the, in clear ways, even if it doesn't set it up that way. Sure. Um, so it's not a very challenging show in that way, okay. but it's a very well executed show. Mm. Um, so I liken it to like the highest end of what network provides, which sometimes can be really good. Um, yep. But, you know, Jack's going to win and there's not going to be really any super complicated losses that he incurs um, yeah. in the course of the series that'll like change him or cause him to become more cynical or kind of a dickhead or anything like it yeah, yeah. doesn't happen. You know, it's not that kind of show. So sure. Uh, in that way, it's straightforward. So however, Sanctimonious, um, I love the ending of the series, which I won't spoil it, but it's but it's about how uncompromising accountability and justice and high moral standards we should have for elective officials mm. and the, the moral outrage we should feel at towards any of them that serve interests other than those of their country. Like that's the sentiment yeah. on which the show ends. That's 
really cool. And it's cool to have a character like Jack Ryan who spends this whole series like doing inadvisable things from a career standpoint because he's unwilling to compromise his values, his morals, the values of the highest ideals of the United States. Like Mm. he represents something that is uncompromising moral valor. And Mm. so in that way, he's an endearing character to get behind, even though he's sometimes is brash or he's like, you know, a little, um, a little impulsive. It's sort of fun in a way to go, all right, well, but because of the way this show works, he's going to be fine. So I appreciate it when he like, dips out or defies this person or just, or ignores this order, you know, it's, 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 you know, it's fun. Um, I have spoken to people who wouldn't give the show as much praise as me, uh, because they feel that as an adaptation of Tom Clancy's character in the books that it's lacking, Mm. um, which is a fair critique as always. It's just not a critique that applies to the average viewer. I think most people, especially people our age at this point have not read the Tom Clancy books. Yeah. Um, there are people who have, and there are certainly older people who are likely to have, but at this point, like Tom Clancy has, Tom Clancy died a long time ago and all the Jack Ryan books that exist now are by other authors that are continuing, you know, that character with his permission. And there's a lot of them. So, yeah. Um, I think that that audience is small. So, yeah, I, I, so I, I write, if you have Amazon prime uh, again, as I always say, statistically, you do. So um, yep. I think it's worth checking out. It's it's uh, if it were music, it would be classified under easy listening. And so I think Jack <laughs> Ryan is easy viewing, sure. um, you know, engaging, fun, uh, not a snooze, but uh, unchallenging. Okay. I remember when my, when my wife and I were watching Breaking Bad, and uh, she 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 had to stop after um, after the Jane scene because oh, uh, yeah. she couldn't get behind Walt anymore. Yeah, and I was so sad because I was like, "Oh, now I have to now we can't watch the show." There's so much cool stuff coming, but I was like, yeah, yeah, "Yeah." She was like, "Is that the worst thing he does?" And I was like, "No, no." <laughs> and she was like, "I can't watch this show anymore. <laughs> I, I I want my characters to be good people." And I was like, "All right, well, I feel the opposite. This is not the show for you." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I, "I like them to be as hard to like as possible." <laughs> yes. Anyway, um, Jack Ryan is straightforward, so uh, I'll I'll recommend she watch that instead. Yes, there you go. Okay. All right, let's talk about uh, Secret Invasion, the other show we're here to speak about tonight. Fury. Since you've been gone, things have gotten much worse. How do you think I came back? You're in no shape for this fight that lies before us, old friend. This is personal. Very few of us know about the wars fought in the shadows that have raged on this planet. Do you feel responsible? Avengers. This war is one I have to fight alone. You're the most wanted man on the planet. You don't know what they have planned for you. The Great Nick Fury. Fuck this show. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> um, Secret Invasion. Uh, I'll just set it up real quick. Sure, why not? Secret Invasion is a show you've heard about, whether you are a Marvel fan or not, because it's been aggressively marketed as it is. Um, it is the... Uh, I don't even know what to how to line this up in the chronology. It's just the, the latest show 
in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, it's a six episode series on Disney Plus, um, starring Samuel L. Jackson, Ben Mendelsohn, Kingsley Benadir, lots of people. Uh, Dermot, Dermot Mulroney's in this. Oh, that's okay. Cool. Sorry, I was like, who? Um, Amelia Clark, Olivia Coleman, Don Cheadle. Um, uh, there's there's people on this show. And um, it's about Nick Fury, played by Samuel L. Jackson, working with uh, Talos. Remember, remember that guy? Nope. Um, he was a he's a scroll. You have, would have had to watch Captain Marvel. Anyway, he's um, sort of trying to expose this like underground movement of you know rebel scrolls led by this villain uh, who are trying to destroy the planet, um, basically. Again, th- this is one of those things where either the story or their budget or the format makes this story feel small. Mm. Um, and something with these kinds of stakes, I think, should feel large. This is based on a pretty popular Marvel comic storyline. It's a big one. Like Secret Wars, that's a big one. You know, So the fact yeah. that one of the upcoming Avengers movies is, has that title, that's big expectations. The same as Civil War was when with the Captain America movie, like civil war is a, a big deal in the comics and they did a different thing with it, but it was still, they lived up to the, um, to the, 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 the tone and the feeling of that comic, I think. And then the infinity gauntlet, that's a big deal in the comics. And I think they lived up to that, um, to that storyline. I'm sure it's different than in the comics, but like cinematically infinity war and end game felt and feel like, like a, like a big deal. And they, yeah. they, they made sure that it felt like an event. Um, Seeker invasion is supposed to be one of those things. Um, it's a very known, I say very known, but like it, it's, it's one of the big ones. Right. Yep. And it deals with the scrolls are long conning the earth basically by a decades long, slow um, replacement of the human race by these shape-shifting scrolls who are strategically impersonating important and pivotal people um, in order to, you know, take over the world basically. And it's a, it's supposed to be a, a big deal. And one of my issues with it was, as I said, it just feels small and trivial mm. considering what the, what the, uh, the stakes are. And I feel like these episodes, I mean, I'm not the first person to say that this is not a good show. And um, you can find videos out there of people who are going into way more detail than I'm going to go into, but I did happen to have a lot of thoughts about it. And I just think that these episodes carry no dramatic weight. Um, They don't convince me that this infiltration is widespread or that it's insurmountable. Mm. It feels like, hey, if you act quick, you could probably squash this thing. Like, you know, it doesn't feel... Uh, like a big obstacle. The story feels very half baked. The plot at least feels half baked. Um, and I just felt zero tension, no excitement, no investment in this show. The fight in the finale, I won't give anything away. was just really silly. Yeah. And I was sort of waiting on how the finale happened before I gave a final judgment, but the show just feels cheap mm. and that's disappointing. Someone pointed out, I don't remember who it was. Um, maybe another, maybe it's someone, uh, someone online, that this show should have felt like the thing. Yes. The thing is a great movie where we're constantly like, Oh crap. Like who's the thing now? Let's, let's do this blood test. Like, Oh, where'd that person go? Wait, were you here a second ago? Like maybe you're the thing. Like it's just paranoia and distrust all around. Right. Yep. And clever filmmaking heightens that. Like it's, that's already a freaky concept, but if you film it right, then you're like glued to the screen because you're like analyzing everyone's performance. Like, oh, he's a little more closed off than he was in the first scene. Is is he the thing? Yeah. And this show should have felt like that. It should have had the constantly been questioning who everyone is. And the entire fucking time in this show, I'm I, I know they're not even trying to hide people's true identities. Like it's made plain several times, semi immediately, who is mm. a scroll. Yeah. And so it's never like as the viewer, you're never like, is that person like a, a scroll or are they just mean? Like, what is this? You know? Yeah. By the way, that's all I wrote after I watched <laughs> it. And then later I had other stuff. Yeah. Um, so this is going to kind of bleed into a discussion of Marvel as a, as a main, as a, you know, 
as a, as an entity going forward. So feel free to chime in, but like, I, I'm just going to say to people like, I, <laughs> um, I, I don't recommend this show as someone who loves Marvel, as someone who's lenient towards their material. Yeah. I, I, right now, as of this recording, this show is completely skippable. It does mm. not, it does not deepen an understanding of anything. It doesn't set up things that are coming at this point. Um, and it just feels like a completely disposable and unnecessary show. And yeah. most of these, I will say like, while they're not great, even the ones that aren't great, I go like, okay, well that, that might come back somewhere. Sure. This is one of those ones. Like I, I, I've had people even tell me like, I still think it's kind of in the mid tier. And I'm like, I just don't, I yeah. don't think it even makes the mid tier. I think it's the one among the weaker shows like Miss Marvel. Mm. Um, it's just, and I, and, and, um, I, I, I don't think Moon Knight was consequential at this point, but Moon Knight was an, a more interesting show than this and did sure. cool things with the camera and did cool things with storytelling and did do cool things with characters that you can only do with somebody who's a split personality. Like mm. that show made use of its premise. This show did not. Mm. And, uh, and it's disappointing. Um, this is the kind of show that is allowed to be criticized for not including the Avengers. Normally I hate that criticism. Like, why couldn't they just call the Avengers? And it was like, shut yeah. up. Yeah. Um, but I know why they didn't call the Avengers in this show. There's two reasons. There's number one, they can't afford all those actors. Yep. Number two, because they have no fucking idea where everyone is or what they're doing right now. Yeah. Um, I, I continue my theory that the main reason phase four and now I guess five uh, so, so far is a complete mess is that they were, I continue to contend that I think they were forced to scale back their uh, integration due to COVID delays and scheduling conflicts with other actors projects. I think that they just, I think that that stuff was a lot more, a lot easier to do without all of those restrictions back in the day, because you could just grab people to shoot a scene real quick yeah. and yeah. you already knew how another show turned out. So you could kind of, you, so you could thread that in real quick. And now it's like, yeah. we don't know what order things are being released in and we don't, we can't secure these actors. What do we do? And it's just like, just don't make any promises you can't keep. And that translates yeah. to n no integration with the story. Yeah. I also suspect that Disney has been cheap for the past mm. few years and therefore they have not signed anyone to the multiple deals that it probably takes to secure these cameos and ensemble appearances and other shows and films. Like that's the thing is like if, when you're Marvel, like whether you're criticized for it or not, like what you, part of what you do is integration and having yeah. actors show up even for an episode, just to remind people that this is an interconnected universe. And you know, like, I'm starting to think that like they cheaped out on paying people and they're just like, okay, cool. I'm not going to be in secret invasion. Then like, yeah. I'm not going to do that for free. You need to pay me. So, right. It just feels like it's missing that, that element. Um, there's something that one of those videos, um, you sent me like points out after in, in spoilers for Falcon, the winter soldier. Um, but at the end of the Falcon, the winter soldier, when it's revealed that like, um, Peggy, the, uh, uh, Sharon Carter is like the power broker and she's like a bad person now. Yeah. A lot of us were like, oh, maybe she's just a scroll. Like that seems out of, yeah. that's completely out of character for her. And this show like doesn't address that. And you're just like, so that's just, is she, she just sucks now? Yep. That's a perfect opportunity to explain away the bad writing of another show or, yep. or set yep. it up as a deliberate thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, if, if the Avengers were present, <laughs> if there was a single powered hero in this show, which there is not. Yeah. All they'd have to do to prove that they weren't a scroll is to use their goddamn powers. Yeah. Oh, Thor can't lift his hammer. He's a scroll. Yep. Bruce Banner can't become the Hulk. He's a scroll. Doctor Strange can't do magic. He's a scroll. Uh, you know, Ant-Man, Hawkeye, Sherry, they can't do any of their normal things. Scrolls. Yeah. The show is lazy as fuck. And apparently everyone can see that. I've spoken to people uh, who think the character work with Nick Fury is interesting in the show. I disagree. I don't find mm. an ounce of what they do with him interesting or clever or worthy of mm. inclusion in this grand story. Um, this is one more property that just to me muddies the brand. Uh, in this show, Nick Fury is so like over the hill and his age is constantly emphasized and his over the Maria Hill. 
<laughs> his um <laughs> good one, Dustin. Thank you. His ineffectiveness as a leader is like essential to this the show even having a premise. And one, that's just sad to see because of all the characters, especially characters without powers, Nick Fury should feel like he's always got an ace up his sleeve. And he hasn't since the Infinity Saga um, when he shows up. Um, in this show, he's either just a hands-off dick uh, or he's disappointingly impotent as a hero. And so he's zero fun to watch. Yeah. Sorry about the penis puns. Um <laughs> Like it or not, part of what makes Marvel shows and movies fun to watch is the idea that they're advancing the overall narrative of the saga, as I said, that we're building towards something. And right now it feels like we're just fucking around and milking the brand. Yeah. And that's disappointing. Um, you know, I'm angry about it at this point, but I'd be angry if I felt like Disney didn't get the message. So maybe they do, maybe they don't. But one thing's for sure, they're scaling back future Marvel projects because they're beginning to see that people are having opinions about their diluted quality and their overambitious output. So the yeah. problem may be on the way to solving itself, but you can't just make fewer projects. You still have to make better projects. You can't yeah. just scale back. Yeah. You have to refocus on quality. Yeah. Um, hopefully a the A-listers who are involved in some of these projects have the courage to fight for the integrity of their stories. I'm yeah. a little surprised that that hasn't happened yet or there's no evidence that it's happened because otherwise what use is there in being a highly paid actor at the front end of a global brand if you're not going to leverage that visibility for the good um the problem is i have no idea who the i'll call it the soft leader of the marvel brand is right now um it used to be robert downey jr and the original avengers but who's the face of the mcu right now is it anthony mackie is it brie larson is it letitia wright who's in charge Nobody, nobody like there's no you open that Marvel page and it's just like, here's the new heroes. But like, who's the main person? Well, so I, I yeah, I do want to talk about this for a second because yeah. I've had the same thought. Um, The great thing about the the Infinity Saga was you, you had Tony Stark's POV. Right. Mm-hmm. And and it was very clearly like, obviously, there are movies where Tony Stark does not appear and you're not seeing his POV. Right. But the film that that entire franchise was was built on Tony Stark. Mm-hmm. It was built on his choices. It was it was, you know, destroyed by his choices. Right. It was um, on a few occasions. And <laughs> and it was, you know, him. It was it was Robert Downey Jr. It was Tony Stark who uh, who made the world tick. And and there is nobody like that now. Um, because even the established characters like strange or Hawkeye don't take that role because they aren't fit to take that role. And that's no slight to Jeremy Renner or to Benedict Cumberbatch. It's just there. The characters aren't there. The characters can't do that. And, and that's what kind of sucks about it is like, um, if you think about the, the first uh, if you think about the Infinity Saga, um, Iron Man, Iron Man 2, Iron Man 3 all do um, specific things to push that character in new directions, mm-hmm. right? Like even Iron Man 3, which, um, you know, ended his arc but didn't end it, um, right. was – you know, it, it, it dealt with his post-traumatic stress. Like it's all built on his back. Captain America, it's all an exploration of of that character, even Civil War, which was equally a, a Tony Stark film. It was built on, you know, what does Steve Rogers do at any given point? Um, and 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 though and even Thor, even the Dark World, they all um point that character into a new direction, right? It's, you know, the first one, fish out of water. The second one, you know, he loses his mom. The third one, he loses his dad. It's like they all are pushing that character into a specific spot. Yeah. And and in this, like with all of phase four and now as much of phase five as I've seen, um, it, 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 there, there's none of that. Like after Strange 2, what new direction did that point Strange in? It it just doesn't feel like any. It feels like all it did was world build. Oh, yeah. there's a multiverse now. Right. Okay, but what did it do for him? I don't know. He was with her and then he wasn't with her. Yeah. Okay, but that's where we were. That's exactly where we were. Right. It doesn't 
it doesn't point him in any new direction. And and that's the problem. Thor four, it's the same thing. It's oh, he's he's with her, but he's not with her anymore. That's yeah. exactly where we were. Yeah. Right? Like it, none of it, none of it's actually pushing into new territory with these characters. And so it, none of it can be of consequence. Um, and, and so to me, yeah, like that's one of the, one of the biggest, uh, uh, failures of the post infinity saga films. Um, and, and, and that's notwithstanding, uh, the epilogue type Spider-Man movies and Guardians 3, everything else has felt very much just aimless and pointless. Yeah. And and you think about like, you know, even Wakanda Forever. Well, what does this do for Shuri? Uh, well, she's Black Panther now. She knows not to be a grump. That's about it. Yeah. And like, oh, well, but that's that's nothing. Like that doesn't that doesn't actually push her in an intriguing new direction. Yeah. Um, now she's just learning lessons she should have learned when she was eleven. Um <laughs> don't get angry. Okay. Don't hold a grudge. Okay. Don't be so um, hot headed. Yeah. There seems to be no no aim and there's no protagonist. Who who do I root for here? Yeah. I have no clue who to think of as the leader. And I just, and so that just, that just leads me to believe that they don't know either. Um, they, I feel. They don't know because by now they would have positioned that person in that role. Yes, they would have done that. And I feel like what they're doing is they're looking at box office and like social media data. Who's our lead? Like, I feel like that person might've been intended to be Captain Marvel. And then after all the backlash of that of of Brie Larson for whatever reason they're probably like oh maybe it shouldn't be Brie Larson and it's like probably should be somebody like yeah it's or, gotta or be somebody just just the idea that like they're all together like at the end of Shang-Chi like there's a brief like hologram thing of like Bruce Banner and and of Captain Marvel and, and that was like the only time where you got the sense yeah. that, like oh like we're still doing stuff together yeah thank god but like, well, there's not much else in the in the entire fourth phase that really feels like these people all still know each other and keep in contact and are somewhat yes. organized. Because I really don't want to see another movie or spend significant real estate in in uh, Secret Wars or whatever it's going to be having people like, oh, are you are you Carol Danvers? You know, like just yeah. Don't waste my time, please. Or or the idea of like, well, we've all done our own individual adventures and now we have to get together and learn how to work together as a team. I know. It's like, I don't want to. We've done that. We've done like, this. Don't do it again. Yeah. Like they, th the truth, the truth of the matter is for all of these big shows and, and movies, I would consider like Wakanda Forever to be a big one. I would consider Spider-Man to be a big one, although that's a Sony co-produced thing. So whatever. But yeah. all of these big ones. They should should have included the Avengers. Yeah, they should have, and like the uh, uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier should have included the Avengers. Uh, Hawkeye should have included the Avengers. These these things should absolutely should feature the Avengers, so that we get an overarching idea of what they are doing at any given point, right? Like, because at this point, I don't know. Have any of them seen each other since? The right, blip, right? We don't know. There's yeah. no indication of that. Has Hulk gone out and hung out with Hawkeye? We don't know. Yeah. There's we we just don't know. And and after uh, how how long ago did Endgame come out? That was what 2019. 2019. 2019. Yeah. So <laughs> you're you're telling me. That in four years, we don't know, and, and presume, I don't know, longer than that in story world? I don't know. Story world has only been like a couple of years. Like I think, okay. let's see, an end game, the five year is like 2023. Okay. And so I think, I think from the stuff I read a while back, like we might be in like 2025 now in, okay. in their timeline. So it's only been a couple of years. But in two years, we should have seen more interaction than we have gotten. Yeah, that that that's sort of unforgivable. It like sucks. Haw <laughs> Hawkeye goes to the play to see, you know, the the Avengers version of 
the Broadway musical or whatever. Oh yeah. <laughs> Some of the other Avengers should have been there. It should have been there. <laughs> right? Like like Thor should have been there getting like the celeb treatment and Hawkeye yeah. is like uh, nobody knows who I am in the crowd. And like, you know, Banner should have been there and like them saying like Hey, down in front, we can't see over your big green head, you know, like, like that should have <laughs> hey. all, Hey, this is New York. Hey, hey, get out of here. hey Oh, I'm walking <laughs> here. Uh, that should have been a, a thing. And like, um, you know, Oh, Hey, whoa, what have you been up to, man? I haven't seen you in three months. You haven't yeah. been to the Avengers meetings, you know, <laughs> yeah. like, I don't know, man, like, give me something, but, but that, that's, that's, yeah, that's a huge problem. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think that too, like, I just, I wonder like, what is their, what's their plan? Are they, are they taking any measures? Like, are there, are they making any changes? And and I also sort of recognize like whatever changes are coming, they're not going to be coming till late 2024 because everything between now and then has been shot for the most part. Yeah. Um, that means that the films most likely to have interventions are Thunderbolts and Blade, which. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, all the shows are in post except for Daredevil and What If Season 2. Yeah. And th- that does not instill a lot of confidence in me since I have little excitement for most of these projects already. Yeah. Um, the, my, my go-to is always Echo. Don't you want to see the Echo film or, or, or series? <sighs> yeah. I'm like... I, if if you hadn't really named your show Echo, I wouldn't. I would have no clue who you're talking about. I don't know what this. Yeah, like I, 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 I and again, like I'm glad that people responded to Alakwa Cox, but like that does not mean that that character needs her own spinoff. It's, it's, no. it's inconsequential. Like this is a side. This is a side character of, of one of our main heroes' stories. That's way too far removed from the main thing. To- uh, Echo's totally story, valid character. Yeah. But, but yeah, I mean, they should have done, if they did Hawkeye season two and she played a more pivotal role in that, or if she had just played a more pivotal role in the first season anyway, then like, sure. But as it is, she was so inconsequential to that show. Why should she get her own show? She was more just kind of like cool for the show, but like she has nothing to do with secret wars. Yeah. Like I, I, don't, I don't look yeah. at Echo and go, I wonder what it would be like when she meets Dr. Doom. Cause it's probably not going to happen. Yeah. It's just not worth spending time on. Yeah. I'm sorry. Here, here's the problem here. Th- th- this, this is a hundred percent the problem. I, I forget what year it was. The Disney acquired 20th century Fox, but it's been a few years ago. It was um, like 2017 or something. 20, okay. Yeah. What I don't understand. And I, and look, I'm not Kevin Feige. I know he's got a lot of plates spinning in the air. I get it. Totally understood. Why he's not building this on the back of Charles Xavier. I know. Or Reed Richards or Wolverine or any of these people. I I will never, I will never understand that. Yeah. I, I Look, I'm not a huge fan of either like, x-men or fantastic four i guess but like i i respect them i respect their place in the comic pantheon charles xavier is your new dude right or cyclops is your new dude yeah like gene gray is your new person like let it be gene gray like give us somebody who it probably should be Reed Richards, though, to be honest. It, yeah. it, like put Reed Richards front and center instead of having your John Krasinski cameo. You should have introduced Reed right then and there. <laughs> yeah. And that should have been your introduction for our new lead, Reed Richards, who's going to lead us into the future. And that's what you should have done. You should have fast tracked those films, not to the point where we get a terrible movie, but fast track it in that, Hey, we're putting a lot of time and effort and money into this immediately so that this thing can come out as soon as possible and be in good shape. There's no reason on earth that I acquire 20th century Fox years ago. And it takes five, six, seven years to get those characters on the screen. That's ridiculous. Yeah. That is utterly ridiculous. And that's the thing that leads me into like phase six, right? Like are people even going to stick around for that? Because Right now, Phase Six is just Fantastic Four, two Avengers films, and three unannounced films. 
And that leads me into my next question. Like, who the fuck even are the Avengers right now? They're, they're, who knows? It doesn't feel like a connected universe. And no, this it is doesn't. bordering on some pre-Iron Man licensed IP crap. Like, it yes. feels like it did before Marvel Studios became their own thing and started making their own films. It just feels like we're just going to make stuff. And, and it's a little bit like DC where it's like, we're going to connect some of it, but not all of it. Uh, whatever we can do really at the time, we're just going to do it. it. It's a lot, like you said, it's a lot like the, it, to me, something like Echo harkens back to Electra. Mm-hmm. Remember when we get an Electra film or a Catwoman film yeah. for DC? It's like, the this is such an early 2000s bullcrap model yeah. where it's like, well, we just have the rights to this person, so we're going to do it. <laughs> Yes, and right. like they, they don't matter. They have no reason. And then we'll have like some cheeky line of dialogue in there. Like, ah, eh, this never happens to the guy in the, in the blue spandex. Uh-huh. And you're like, oh, cool. Okay. So he exists in your world, but not really. That's right. exactly what they're doing right now with Mar with the MCU. It's like, ah, eh, I remember the Avengers one time before there's a green guy. And it's like, oh, it, it reminds me of like the, st- the stuff that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. did. They would reference the Avengers all the time by description, but not by name. Yeah. And you were sitting there like, they'll never be on this show, will they? Like, Yeah, it, you know? because they'd say something like the green guy. Yeah, the green guy or the guy with the hammer. Yeah, the big green know, guy. Yeah, or the yeah, star yeah. spangled man or whatever. And you're like, okay, right. yeah. they'll never show up here. <laughs> this is right. as much as we're ever going to get. It, it's ridiculous, but that's a totally what that's totally what it is. It's it's Electra all over again. It's Catwoman all over again. Yeah. It's like those characters may be strong enough to hold their own film, but not in the form that you're presenting them to me. And that's that's the problem. And and I yeah, I just don't understand their hesitancy to embrace the 20th Century Fox characters that they've received the ability to use. Yeah. Um like I don't know. Maybe they thought there was Logan was too soon to make another Wolverine film. I don't know. But like, and maybe they were like, ah, they did X-Men Apocalypse, Days of Future Apocalypse, whatever it was. Um <laughs> I, yeah. We're not going to do another X Men for a minute, but like, no, this is my opportunity to build. Like, I I need a character to yeah. position this around, and here's some really easy, cool. Why did you ones buy the rights? It. Like, right? It, like, you have the rights. Like, if anyone's entitled to it. make a thing, it's you. Like, exactly. Go ahead do it and do it right. Put your own spin on it. I guarantee you, if you had posted. Uh, something like we're now accepting you know (laughs) open pitches for x-men you would be inundated with with new takes on those characters and one of the things that that one of the videos you sent me said was like it feel it feels like part of the reason they keep the plots under wraps of these shows until like the final trailer or until the release of the show is to prevent like redditors and other people online from embarrassing the writers yeah. by coming up with better ideas. Yes. It's almost like they're afraid to go, oh, fuck, why didn't we think of that, guys? Yep. We look yep. so stupid. So I, 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 have a, I have an idea for Secret Invasion. Now, bear, bear in mind, I didn't watch this this series. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I've watched a lot of content about the series, but I haven't yeah. watched the series because I figured the content about the series is far more entertaining. Yeah, it um, is. <laughs> and I, I, did, I did watch, according to Disney+, Plus, I watched the first episode and the first 10 minutes of the second episode. I don't remember the second episode at all, but maybe, I do remember maybe watching. Maybe asleep. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I do remember, maybe. I do remember watching the first episode. Okay. Um, and, but, but, and having no interest, um, is when they killed Hill, I was like, <sighs> why? Oh, yeah. This is ridiculous. Yeah. Um, so whatever I'm out, but, um, but here, here's the idea, right? So if, if, if the scrolls master plan is to incite world war three, let the humans kill each other. And then the scrolls will rise up as the dominant life form on earth or whatever yeah like if that's their idea why not just like appear on national television as a as a human like as a president or as some someone you know kim kardashian who cares and they show up and then they (laughs) become a scroll and they're like we're hiding among you you know and we're going to get you they don't even have to do anything they just say that one phrase yeah 
and then Chaos. humanity will tear itself apart. Yep. And to me, that's a much more interesting idea to watch like everybody just go nuts because yeah. of this. Um, uh, like every anybody could be a scroll. Mm-hmm. And then you hammer it home by having a couple of people that we know end up being scrolls, but don't do it as roadie because that's a stupid idea. Um, do it like because here's the thing about roadie regardless of like when this happens, because it does ruin things if it happens too early and if it happens yeah. too late, then it's inconsequential. And really it's inconsequential anyway, because Rhodey is like, it clearly they were looking and going, okay, one, who can we afford Two, who, who can we give this to? That's not, that's important, but not super important. And he's like a solid B tier. So we're going to give it to him. Mm-hmm. Super, super predictable. What they, what they should have done is had like a couple of good reveals and even like introduce Sam Jackson's wife in this as a mm-hmm. human. And then like, he doesn't even know she's a scroll, right? Mm, yeah. Like we don't know. She, he doesn't know. Nobody knows. We didn't even know he had a wife and like, so whatever. And then uh, like have a few good reveals here and there. Like you could even do like, you know, freaking, I don't know. I don't know. Linda Cardellini's a scroll like Hawkeye has been married to a scroll the whole time. Who cares? Yeah. Right. Like it doesn't matter, but, but, but it's somebody that like, Oh, this does fundamentally change things. And it proves that it could be anybody. And then like watch humanity tear itself apart and watch the Marvel universe tear itself apart. And it really should have been. And I understand this like fundamentally changes the fact that this is like a super made for cheap TV show, but like you need to include more people that this impacts because it can't just impact Nick Fury. This also has to impact Hawkeye and, and Kate Bishop. And it has to impact, um, uh, I'm blanking on literally anybody else in the MCU right now. Um, uh, it, ha- it has to impact, uh, like Sam Wilson, and- Sam Wilson and Bucky, and it has to impact Yelena and it has to impact everybody. Yeah. And, and if it, and, and so you have to have these moments where like, even if it's one scene, Right. Where they're with somebody we know. That's why I say Linda Cardellini, because like you can have a scene with Hawkeye and his wife where she's like, hey, I'm a scroll, bro. And like, yeah, that's a bad example. Like, I wouldn't actually do that, but that I'm just using it as like a, you know, somebody like that. Somebody that's important to our heroes isn't who they say they are. And then it really impacts our heroes. Then it means something. And right now, best I can tell, it doesn't mean anything. Even, yeah. even even if people are scrolls, it's like, look, here's characters we've never met before. One of them's a scroll. Yay. These heads of state, one of them's a scroll. And it's like, yeah. okay, but I don't care because I don't know them. You have to make this impactful for your protagonists. Yeah. If if Shang-Chi, if Aquafina was a scroll. I was gonna say if, if Katie would right? have been a scroll, like that means yeah. something to him because he doesn't have a best friend anymore. Right. You know, and that, that has, that has implications. But, but it also raises the question of why don't I have a best friend anymore? Right. Right. Like you're still the person that I've had all these memories with. You just held a secret from me. And like you, you get to introduce a lot of really deep concepts of like, do I like you because you're a human or do I like you because we've met, we've shared an intimate connection. Right. And and then, you know, you reveal that about Sam Jackson's wife and it's like, oh, well, it really doesn't matter. Yeah. Right. Like we, we can coexist and get along and whatever. Um, but but that I mean, what if Jimmy Woo was a scroll who <laughs> like like <laughs> literally it, it could be anybody. Yeah. But and you can afford Randall Park, I'm sure. But like, <laughs> you know, it could be anybody and it and it should be anybody. Um, it should have felt more impactful in that way. Yeah. And you know what? If you knew you were filming Quantumania around the time you were filming this, which I guess you probably weren't, but roughly, like it wouldn't be that hard to like have uh, one of uh, what's that guy's name? That Das Dalmatian dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a scroll. Yeah. He pops up for a second, and he's I, a scroll. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, you got to do something, like, make this impactful for a protagonist. And that's the problem is there's no, like, Sam Jackson is the protagonist, I guess. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, he is. So how how do the revelation of, how does the revelation of the scrolls affect him personally? You know He what? already knows about the scrolls. I, I would have made that. I would have made him a scroll. 
Mm. I would have made Nick Fury a scroll. I, I think that's hard to like center him as the protagonist and have all these inner moments without like lying to the audience, maybe. Sure, sure. But that's why maybe this, that's why I think, I mean, one of those videos pointed out that it was a mistake to make Nick Fury the protagonist of a show mm. because he is a side character and he's not really a character with, I mean, maybe he has, he's played by an actor who can, you know, portray depth. Sure. But he's not a character that himself has a lot of depth. Sure. And to me, it's like if you had instead not focused the show on Nick Fury, but you had, you know, maybe a few, maybe, maybe the show is an ensemble. Maybe it's Hawkeye. Maybe it's like a, a, a mini Avenger. It should have, first of all, this should have been a film. That's what I've yeah. always felt yeah. like. I, I yeah. feel like it was yeah. as a series, it just didn't feel like an event. Yeah. But like you make it a movie and you've got, this is like the first, this is like our first test as, the, as Avengers, like Shang-Chi and and uh and captain america and the winter soldier and um and uh um hawkeye and whoever else it's like we've got a problem these scrolls nick fury calls them all together and then eventually like at the midpoint of the series you realize like oh fuck nick fury is a scroll where's nick fury we yeah. don't know where he is like what have they done with him and Holy crap, what are we going to do? Like our yeah. commander is a scroll. Like that's what you do. Yeah, that's a good idea. It's cuz that's a that's a good concept. Yeah. Like like I I'm of the mindset that Fury could have been a really good character. Like you're right, he's kind of a side character, but he, if they chose to go deep with him here, he could have been elevated to yeah. protagonist level if they had done it right, but they didn't do that right either. So yeah, my mind is like, okay, well, if you can't afford the Avengers and all you have is this crew, then I don't know. I guess, I guess do your protagonist as Maria Hill. And she finds out that, that, that this guy, she's followed all these years as a scroll. Yeah. Right. And like the real fury died in the nineties or, or whatever. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Like it, anything. And, and, and you could have done anything and they just didn't do anything of consequence. It's also not the place to introduce a new hero, which no. I feel like is what they did by the end. Um, yes. or so I'm told. Um, and, uh, and if you introduce a new hero here, it undermines your current protagonist and it, it's out of place in a, in a show whose premise is, Hey, all the people you already know could be a scroll. They may not be the real people you think they're be. Okay, well, how about a new person? Well, that defeats the whole point <laughs> exactly. of the thing. The There's whole too many point new was to, to examine and deconstruct the people I already know. Yeah. Not introduce me to new people. Yeah. It, it, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. It feels like this show, especially, but like the phase in general, but this show like hammers home the point. Like it feels like character consistency doesn't matter and large scale storytelling doesn't matter. And yeah. anything introduced in the shows feels like it doesn't matter so yeah. far. Like right. there's some exceptions, but like I'm more, I more have a problem with like all of this just feeling cheap and feeling sure. like a sucker for tuning in to watch it as if yeah. something cool is going to, is going to happen. Cause, and yeah. this is the first time I felt like this angry about it. I also, I just have a lot of logistical questions. Like they take people, keep them in stasis mm -hmm. and then they themselves like take over that person, but they don't kill the people, right? No, they don't kill them. I think they have to keep mining them for memories or whatever. Okay. So or there's a few, Disney a few questions. Yeah. One, didn't, didn't they say that they're keeping these people like in a super irradiated part of the world? <laughs> so are these people all irradiated now? I would think, I would feel like the logical thing would be for the next thing, like the next movie it's all those people being told they have cancer. Yeah. Just because, like, yeah, exactly. Like, like if, if Rhodey was taken seven years ago or whatever. Yeah. And he's just been in like on a morphine drip in a basement. Yes. In Chernobyl. Why didn't he wake up covered in tumors? Right. Exactly. <laughs> like, well, and here's the, the other, Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, I think that's James gosh. Rhodes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and here's the other thing. He looks like a uh, uh, floops, uh, creations from spy kids, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the, yes. the, what was it? Yes. The, um, I have no idea, but I know what you're talking about. All right. I'll, I'll find out their name. Keep going. Um, but they, but, but yeah, there's that, but also like what happens when you have somebody in stasis and then they blip. And then they return five years later. Mm -hmm. Where do they return to? The irradiated part of the world? Right. Flu Fuglies. 
Fooglies? Yeah. Floops. That does not even ring a bell. Floops, uh, Floops Fooglies. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Secret Invasion is uh, a turd. It's a big turd. Um, I'm curious what the um, Rotten Tomatoes is on this thing. 54%. I think I heard that the last episode is the lowest rated anything on uh, <laughs> uh, from from the entire MCU. The 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 final episode of Secret Invasion has a seven percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Seven oh. <laughs> percent. Oh, it is pretty bad, I will say. Sheesh. Okay, so in the section on the future, um, this was almost a year ago, but Kevin Feige said Secret Invasion is supposed to lead into Armor Wars. Um, so I guess people are thinking that there's a lot of Armor Wars that's going to deal with Rhodey, like getting caught up on things maybe I, i've heard i've heard that too that somebody was like uh the reason they don't clarify anything in this in this is because they're going to do it in armor wars mm-hmm. and and my first thought was wow like basically the screenwriters on this get a free pass yeah they don't they don't have to live with any of their choices no, they don't have to, or any yeah. of their consequences and now whoever takes up the mantle and decides to, write to explain armor wars, things yeah, has to like completely like maybe they've gone back in their brain like and written this entire thing. And now they have to go all the way back to the starting board and realize like, oh, the roads that I wrote for is now not the roads that exists. Like I, in the video you sent me, like they they said that like the director, like Ali Salam, I think is his name. Like he just sort of his reaction was to blame the was to blame the fans for expecting yeah. the show to be something else or whatever. Yeah. But, you know, it was pointed out that this show fails its premise. It's not a spy thriller. Like, it's not a... Well, this is a common tactic right now, not just with Marvel, but, like, across the board of, like, when you you make a piece that's bad, it's never your fault. Yeah. It's always the audience's fault. Like, the audience is either racist or sexist or uh, expects too much or whatever. And I'm like, well, first of all, I would hope that the audience expects a lot because that means they're invested. Like if I'm a writer and I'm given a project where the audience's expectations are high, that's a blessing because that means they care already. And I don't have to, I don't have to work as hard to get them to care. Right. Like imagine taking that approach if you're writing the last season of your popular TV show and just be like, eh, the audience cares too much. (laughs) <laughs> no they, because you just spent five years or whatever like making us care so help us care like that that's the dumbest thing i've ever heard of and and the 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 idea of like oh well they're sexist or whatever like you heard this about uh you know if somebody makes a criticism about captain marvel or if some or or star wars it's like oh well you just don't like that raise a female and it's like well look Hold, hold, pump the brakes. I believe there are absolutely some fans of these franchises who will hate things like that for that reason, right? There absolutely are Star Wars fans who will hate Star Wars because it's female led. And that there's no, there's no avoiding that. But I think that's such a small contingent of people that it doesn't account for your low Rotten Tomatoes score. So for me, if you're looking at something like The Last Jedi and saying, like, why did it fail? And you say, well, because people are sexist and don't like Ray. No, no. I think there's a small percentage of people for whom that's true and a large percentage of the people who just don't think you made a good movie. And and you can't blame that on anybody. This is why there, there's I, I read something that was like, do you remember the good old days when uh Batman and Robin came out and Joe Schumacher, Joel Schumacher and uh, and George Clooney both came out and said, sorry, we didn't make a great film. <laughs> they didn't say, well, you guys are just dumb because you expected something that we didn't want to give you. Uh, Instead, they just said, yeah, we know we tried. We failed. Sorry. And it's like there, there's so much. I also kind of don't like that either because, you know, it's yeah. the same as like. Just going back and because there are people who do like it. And it's the same thing like when Shia LaBeouf came out and was like, Yeah, Indiana Jones sucks. And yeah. I always thought that was a really classless move because it's yeah. like, well, but the people who do like it n- now, we're like, well, so what are we, idiots? Yeah, yeah, so, exactly. Like, <laughs> like you just have to go you think you're better than me. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to, like, as an artist, you just have to put something in the world and stand by it. And if you can't stand by it after X amount of time, then just don't talk about it anymore. 
Yeah. Real quick, this this include because we probably should wrap it up. Kevin Feige explained that the creators chose James Rhodes to be a scroll because they were looking for an established MCU character viewers would not be expecting to be a scroll and to introduce a new experience for viewers rewatching his past MCU appearances and questioning if he was a scroll during them. They approached Don Cheadle during early development of the series about this, and he wanted the opportunity to play Rhodey differently, blah, blah, blah. It's revealed that Rhodes has been replaced by a scroll for, quote, a long time in a scene wearing a hospital gown when being released from his containment pod. This was interpreted by some to mean he had been replaced after the events of Captain America's Civil War, a theory which Salem, the director, acknowledged, though he would not confirm this specifically, saying, quote, does it have to be definitive or is it more fun for the audience to go back and revisit every moment since Civil War to question whether Rhodes was a scroll or not? I say, yes, you fuck. It does. <laughs> yeah, it does. It, it's cowardly. It's you're 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 it's it's creatively cowardly to be like, oh, I don't know. Is it like, yeah. I don't know, bro. Like, you're the director. Like, is it you're the, the one the, who decided he's in a gown? Yeah. Like, what? What was your intention? Like, not that yes. it necessarily matters, but like, this is not like if you're going to leave something open to interpretation, you have to leave it open to interpretation. You can't put him in the same wardrobe that he was in, in Civil War and then be like, well, I don't know. Cause that to me just says, like, okay, it was for Civil War, but now you're worried about defending that creative choice because it makes no fucking sense at all. Yeah. And you're just afraid of getting torn apart by fans at this point. Yes. And it's just like, that's just, it's so, it just, there's a lack of thought right now and I don't understand why, but there's a lack of thought that goes into this. And then like when their feet are held to the coals about, they're like, Oh, I don't know. It's whatever you think or whatever the next person thinks who has to handle roadie. It's not my problem anymore. I'm never going to work with Marvel again. This sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you could say, well, they're just doing the the thing that the thing did, right? And and ending on a on a a note that is less than sure, right? <laughs> yeah. And and I'm like, all right, but look, let, let let's let's weigh these things out. The thing, the premise of that film is you don't know who it is, and you don't know if it is, mm-hmm. right? You don't know. That's the whole premise of the thing. So ending on that same note is actually regardless of whether either of those two guys is an alien the the point stands that the characters can never be sure right that's the thing yes we think we just destroyed it but neither of us can actually be sure of that yeah. and we the audience in turn can't be so it it continues the theme of distrust mm-hmm. continues the theme of you know paranoia this this show seems to uh, wish it was paranoia themed, mm-hmm. but instead it 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 actually is all about clarity. And when you take a, which is why they spell out who is what always. And then when you take this one example and decide not to spell it out, then it it becomes a problem. And if you look at it and go, okay, um, th- this is not the same because this ends not on a note of ambiguity, but instead you're definitively reinstalling the original in his proper place. Now that original, the only place, if you ever intend to use roads again, the only thing you can possibly, like one thing, let me put it this way. One thing you have to do is, is approach this subject. The fact that he has missed X amount of years of his life or yeah. X amount of days of his life, whatever it is, however the length of time, he has to come to terms with that. And so if you ignore that and you never bring it up, that's a problem because you're not digging deep enough into that character. So the fact that you have to answer it means there needs to be a definitive answer. And if you, as the director of this, don't want to give that definitive answer, then you need to just buck up and say it hey uh yeah i i think i know but i actually don't want to be responsible for this so i'm going to pass it on to the next guy to figure out and that's that's a really crappy thing to do as a as a writer and as a writer of a franchise to start something and give no finish to it just so you can get out of it 
they, there need to be decisions made when you make a show like this. It can't just be where he was taken. We're not really going to say when and but we're going to make it look like we're saying when. Right. Like you need to make a decision. And for the record, I don't think it makes any sense to have taken Rhodey before Avengers Endgame. Yeah. Like taking yep. him at Civil War makes no sense. That makes his actions in Infinity War and Endgame make no sense for a yep. scroll to be that invested in the fate of, you know, even the most heroic scroll is not yeah. going to maintain cover as Rhodey and use the war machine suit to help the Avengers fight Thanos. Yes. Or time travel, like do all that stuff that nope. stuff that, you know, like requiring contacts and relationships with it just, it doesn't make any sense. Like, especially as soon as like people start getting dusted in Wakanda, that's where you go. You know what? You reveal yourself like, I'm sorry. Like my name is Bacchus or whatever. Let's see. What's the, actually no the Rava. My name is Rava. Um, I'm sorry. Your friends in a bunker in Russia. I don't know how to cope with this. And I'm, I'm feeling this is fucking me up. Everyone yeah, disappearing. Yeah, yeah. Like that's not where you go. Oh, better maintain cover as roadie. What's the point? Or you go, wait, bro, we're going back in time. Dude, I'm going back to my planet, dude. Yeah. Bye. Like, it's still yeah, around. Or exactly. Like I'm going to break off and try to save my, my, my species or whatever. My people. Yeah. And it's like, that it doesn't make any sense. And it doesn't make any sense that a scroll disguised as Rhodey is going to cry at the d- next to a dying Tony Stark. It doesn't yeah. make any sense for the scroll to then be at that funeral as Rhodey. And it yeah. doesn't make any sense. I, I would, I was originally saying like, okay, anytime after end game, that makes sense, but doesn't make sense for a scroll either to be disguised as Rhodey lecturing Sam Wilson about why he didn't take Captain America's shield. Right. A scroll has no context. And, well, context maybe, but certainly no opinions Investment. or feelings about encouraging another black man to, 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 to take up a mantle of something that would empower other black people. Yep. A scroll has no skin in the game. Literally, like that's a, that's a triple pawn. Black skin, yeah. green skin, got no yeah. skin in the game to, yep. to deal with that issue. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. It makes sense for Don Cheadle for for War Machine. He's a black man. Yeah. Yep. Rava's an alien. Who cares? Right. And but like it, it doesn't make any. And I, I guess their thing is like, well, it's, he's been a scroll for a while. Even if he had been a scroll for a week, the plot of this show doesn't change. Yeah. Rhodey's been compromised. He has very close access to the president. That is the utility of kidnapping him and yep. assuming his his appearance in the show. Doesn't yep. matter how long you've been doing it. Yep. All you gotta do is do it the day of whatever they needed to be done to happen. Correct. And you don't have to you don't have to be in deep cover for years. <laughs> well, right. But but then this is the other thing is like, okay, so let's say it happened before uh Falcon and Winter Soldier. Yeah. One appear that's his only post in game appearance in yes. the MCU before yeah. this. So one appearance is not enough to give you that effect that y'all are looking for, which is like we can go back and look uh-huh. at all of his appearances and figure out if he was a scroll. It's one. It's one appearance. Yeah. So so that leads me to believe that the conversation behind the scenes is in fact it was prior to. In-game, yeah, prior yeah. To that's what War. they're saying, and it's it, just like it has to be. How can you how can you say that and defend against everything I just said? You like, can't. How, how how could I, that's that's the thing? Like I can see how like a few morons who somehow got jobs at Marvel, like you know, could think that. How does Kevin Feige look at that and go, "Yep, makes total sense. Sounds good." Yeah, and so it just goes with my theory at least that like he is not reviewing these. No, he, uh, he, he has not been able to do quality control because yeah. I just refuse to accept that he would look at that and, and say, makes total sense, makes a ton yeah. of sense. And here, here's the other thing. And I, I'm not, I'm not advocating this view, mm-hmm. but I know some people who will, who would advocate this view, which is that the infinity war or the infinity saga was kind of a fluke that this was the level of oversight always 
And the only reason that all of that worked was because of the talented writers on those individual things. No. Not because of a head honcho that was overseeing everything. I don't agree with that. Yeah, I but don't I, I, there are some people who are starting to have that opinion and say, like, look, if this is what we're getting out of it, then maybe this is the way it always was. No. I, I, I disagree. I disagree. I, I th- I think there's a very clear flavor difference between then and now. Yes. And I think something changed clearly. Yeah. What? And 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 it's not necessarily the level of care that the individual writers of these individual product projects are are taking. It, I think it has to it has to be that he's spread too thin. What happened was Infinity War and Endgame made a shitload of money. Yep. And so Disney said, we need to make more things. And yep. we've got Disney Plus. Yep. And we have the ability to make, we can make originals. So like, I, I fully believe that like what happened was there's so many shows that they wanted to make. And so they just expanded too fast. They scaled too fast. And that's what happened. Kevin Feige said, I cannot possibly watch over all of, I cannot possibly shepherd all of these, all of these things the way I have with the, uh, with the movies and do quality control. And somebody at the top said, who gives a fuck, Kevin, shut up. Yeah. And, and, just do it and yeah. whatever. And, and he's I, like, I've got 12 writer's rooms going at a time. How am I supposed to? How am I supposed to monitor this? It's just like, Kevin, wh- who cares? Yeah. What? It's money, Kevin. Money, yes. Kevin. Yes. Yep. Hooray. Hooray. It's money. Money. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you almost slipped into Zoidberg there for some reason. Hooray. Hooray. It's money. Money. Uh, <laughs> I I just uh and, and I think that's what happened. And then of course COVID. And so like that exacerbated like all the connectivity problems that probably already existed because there's too many things. There's no way to tie them together because there was no yeah. mastermind to think of ways to tie them together. Yeah. And that's just what I think happened. And so when it comes down to like what has gone wrong, like what, what is that what is if you could boil it down to a single issue, what happened? It's just whoever decided that we were gonna make all these things at once, that was a bad decision. Yep. And that's what it is because I believe that if there were less projects going on, there's quality control and the quality control, you would have caught mistakes. You would have caught things and stuff that's just, it's, it's making it to the final product that I feel like probably doesn't make it past the first round of, of a script revision otherwise. Yeah. And right. um, so in terms of how, how to fix it, scaling down, like they're talking about doing, that's a good start. Um, mm-hmm. but I feel like almost, even if you really rally, that really means only phase six is going to be any good. And so yeah. when you're going back and rewatching this stuff, you may like, feel like just skipping two years of endless projects just so you can watch a good fantastic four movie and two cool Avengers movies. Um, yeah. because everything else just feels haphazard and just lazy and, yeah, for sure. and like no one gives a shit. And that as a fan, sort of offends me because it's like, well, I give a shit and it sort of feels like you don't care anymore. Yep. And it's like, I still care and I'm giving you money. Yeah. You should care. Right. At least as much as I do, if not more. Exactly. Yeah. Anyway, Secret Invasion. Don't watch it. Secret Invasion. Yep. So the next thing that they're make, making is uh, Loki. Yeah. Which I'm I'm somewhat excited about, although I'm I'm lowered expectations because that's a show that has been produced during all this, and yep, who knows? I don't have any assumptions that it'll be excellent. I just know the first season I liked, and so, but that's in October, so uh, whatever. I'll have thoughts on that, I guess, when that comes out. But I'm not going to the theaters to watch the Marvels. I'm not gonna bend over backwards to watch Echo as soon as it comes about out in November either. Mm-hmm. So. And then after that, we've got whatever else is next. So, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Who I know. cares? <laughs> Who cares? Yeah. I'm excited for Dune. Yeah. I'll just, same. I'm going to keep saying that in every episode. I'm just excited to watch Dune. Yep. Same. Yep. All right. Uh, cool. All right, everybody. Have, Bye, a, everybody. have a good one. See you later. Don't watch Secret See you Invasion. Later. Goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. Hooray. I can't do it. For bedtime. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Bedtime. <laughs> <laughs>